Yo, Spence, what up? How's Tampa today? Still hot, still humid, hoping that it's not raining today or even tomorrow. Wait, tomorrow? Countdown to the Bulls. One, One day, day away. away. Hey! We made it! Woo! We made it, baby. Let's go. This is BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Now live from Studio C, Jerem Jordan, and from Tampa, Florida, Spencer Linton. BYU Sports Nation is live from Studio C, as mentioned, in Tampa, Florida. This is your day-to-day play-by-play presented by the BYU Store. Uh, the official outfit of BYU fans everywhere. Friday, September 2nd, we made it. Thanks for being here. I'm Jerem Jordan from Provo, teamed up with Spencer Linton, who will uh, attempt to tackle a 10th football season together on this program. Unbelievable that we have reached 10 seasons, Jerem. And you know what? As the seasons progress, they ask us to do more and more. So right now, I'm giving you your traffic and weather together here in Tampa, Florida. On the nines? Got some cars going behind us. Oh, yeah, traffic and weather together on the nines from Tampa, Florida. I'm happy to serve that purpose today. And, of course, discuss BYU football because, as we said just a moment ago, we're back. BYU football is here. There's a game tomorrow. I can't believe it. The first thing I ever did at BYU was volunteer on Classical 89 to do traffic with Mark Wade. Fun fact. I had no previous experience (laughs) doing anything. I was doing traffic. (laughs) It was terrible. Sports is a little more fun. Here's the show lineup on a game day eve. What we can guarantee will happen tomorrow in the football season opener against South Florida. We've got a couple of those. The voice of the South Florida Bulls will preview the matchup. Our new weekly fantasy draft with current and former Cougars. And today we draft and set the first lineup. Plus BYU Athletic Director Tom Homel's opinion piece in the Deseret News that clarifies some details about about what happened a week ago. But first, today's headlines. Game day tomorrow, Jerem, number 25 BYU football kicks off the season against USF at the stadium behind me, Raymond James Stadium. Watch it, 4 p.m. Eastern on ESPNU, that's 2 p.m. Mountain Time. And for two hours leading up to the game, you can watch BYU Sports Nation game day beginning at 2 p.m. Eastern, noon Mountain. It's time for the preseason ranked Cougars to get things kicked off against the Bulls. Absolutely. BYU TV and BYU Radio, two hours of coverage. Hey, can't get enough. Let's go. Number seven women's volleyball last night swept Utah State in the first of three matches in the BYU Nike Invitational. The Cougars hit 365. Erin Livingston picked up where she left off Saturday. 12 kills in the three sets to lead the match. The Cougars face Cincinnati. What's up, Big 12 homie? Tonight, 9 Eastern on BYU TV. And don't forget, tomorrow, Number 10 pit at 9 Eastern on BYU TV as well. The only team to defeat BYU in the regular season last year. And in fact, the Cougars lost two games all year, both in that gym, the other in the NCAA tournament. We've got a top 10 matchup tomorrow night. Can't wait for that. Sixth ranked BYU women's soccer under the lights at Southfield last night. Lose to unranked Alabama. The Crimson Tide are pretty good but not as good as we think BYU is. So this comes as a little bit of a shocker. 3-2 the final. BYU now drops to 2-1-1 on the season. I know it's early. The Cougars have fired off 121 total shots combined in four matches. Only have six goals to show for it. So some work to do in finishing some of those shots. BYU right back to work. They will host CSUN tomorrow night. You can watch that game 10 p.m. Eastern on the BYU TV app or, of course, listen on BYU Radio. Before we move on, we want to take a moment to talk about BYU Athletic Director Tom Homel's piece in the Deseret News released last night, which reinforced BYU's anti-racism stance and clarified some details. So here are a few portions of it. Quote, I want to also address a percolating narrative that BYU and even Duke did not do anything to address the situation. When the complaint first surfaced, BYU head coach Heather Olmstead immediately took action. Four staff and a uniformed police officer were placed in the student section. They were later joined by an athletic administrator from Duke. Coach Olmstead's reaction in alerting event management staff was immediate and decisive. The crowd was large and boisterous, but there were no observations of racist behavior. Homo continues. Another false narrative is that Coach Olmstead refused to meet with Rachel and me on Saturday morning. 
In my conversations with the Duke head coach about meeting with Rachel, Heather was never asked by Duke or Rachel to be in that meeting, close quote. We continue to stand with BYU Athletic Director Tom Homo. Quote, let me be clear where BYU stands on this issue. Racism is disgusting and unacceptable, end quote. We recommend reading the entire opinion piece on the Deseret News. All rise and shout, it's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. What's Trending is presented by BYU Food to Go, the MVP of your next event. It's game day eve, people. We made it. It happened. We, uh, it's just tomorrow. One more day, baby. Let's go. Cue up, Les Mis. <laughs> BYU at South Florida. Pre-game coverage, as we mentioned, starting at 2 Eastern time. And uh, we feel like we can guarantee some things tomorrow. Can we actually guarantee these? Of course not. But will we make an attempt right now? Absolutely. So start us off, Spence. We'll alternate what we feel like we can guarantee will happen in tomorrow's game. Oh, Jeremy, I'm about to George Foreman grill this thing. <laughs> I guarantee that BYU's offense will put up at least 450 total yards of offense against South Florida's defense. Yes, and please. And that might not even be aggressive enough. 450 total yards of offense from BYU tomorrow against USF. I guarantee it. Okay, you'll, you'll like the way BYU's offense looks. I guarantee it as well. BYU is ranked 25th in the country, Spence. They should be ranked higher. South Florida is coming off a two-win season. They are certainly talented. They bring back... Uh, they bring in 13 Power 5 transfers. Yet, and I'm going to upset some of you with this, I know you know it's coming. <laughs> BYU by 17 plus. The Cougars are no! going to dominate tomorrow. I no! guarantee that BYU. <laughs> oh, no, he got him in. Close run down. Yeah. I can just hear Cougar board through my computer that I never have looked at Cougar board in the last, like, five years. Come on, man. Someone goes, no, I know you go to Cougar board. I go, no, I don't. I'm, no. 17 plus, baby. <laughs> wow. You went, you went there with the score that shall not be named. You're not afraid. I ain't we might scared. just call it the Voldemort score. Can we do that? Can we just call it the Voldemort score? Is that hey, fair? Hey, yeah, we <laughs> learned in the books. You just don't say his name if you're, if you're afraid. Listen, I have a dog, but I ain't scared, okay? Okay, okay. So we have 450 total yards of offense, and why not? Because as we have chronicled this week and so many weeks leading up to the game tomorrow, we believe in the offensive line. We believe in Jaron Hall as a very, very good returning quarterback, a projected NFL draft pick. We believe in the weapons around him. So why not believe that BYU is going to have a huge offensive performance tomorrow, regardless of weather conditions. They should get to 450, and hopefully it leads to the Voldemort score, Jerem, of 17+. plus. All right, my second guarantee, my friend, okay? And we've talked about this as well, turnovers were something that BYU really, really did a nice job with. They really took care of the ball last year. So tomorrow, even if it's raining and it's ugly and it's literally muddy on the field in there, I don't believe BYU is going to lose the turnover battle. They will be even or plus in the turnover margin tomorrow. They will play clean football, even in week one, even if it's raining. I guarantee BYU will not lose the turnover battle. They will be even or plus in that category. I like it. And if BYU is 17 plus, that probably happens as well, right? We are asking to be freezing cold taken in this situation, but here we go. Okay, my second one. Christopher Brooks. Cal transfer, replacement with Tyler Algier. Two rushing touchdowns tomorrow. Two or more. It's going to happen. Ooh. I think Ooh. BYU's going to get inside the red zone, and this guy is tough to tackle. He probably hasn't been tackled for real in fall camp because guess what? These little arm tackles, these little, little thud drill, yeah, you ain't bringing them down on first contact, okay? This guy is physical. He's got a great old line. Jaron Hall's going to get that ball out to him uh, in the flats. He's going to get some nice uh, yardage out of the backfield as well. I'm excited, man. I'm excited. Two-plus rushing touchdowns for Christopher Brooks. Wow. Okay. You're not even going just two total touchdowns. You feel two like rushing. they both will be on the ground. You're guaranteeing two rushing I touchdowns. I guarantee it. Okay, I like that. I love it. Okay, uh, what up? some love for the special teams, Jerem? So my third guarantee, my stone-cold guarantee, George Foreman grilled that thing like Michael Scott's foot in season two of The Office. <laughs> Jake Oldroyd. <laughs> Will not I love the miss smell a of kick. I love the smell right <laughs> of crispy bacon in the morning. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
Jake Oldroyd will not miss a kick all game long. Extra point field goal. He's going to be perfect okay. tomorrow. I guarantee yeah. BYU special teams and Jake Oldroyd, the kicker, are going to be perfect. We never said these were aggressive. We just said they were guaranteed, right? And listen, the smell. Yeah, my yes. wife hates the smell of bacon, so I actually take and I cook it in an air fryer now. I take it outside. What? That's where we're at in my house. Please, people, help me. <laughs> Tweet at my wife. Tell her I've got to be able to cook the bacon in the house. This is a problem. Okay, my guarantee <laughs> with special teams as well is that my boy, Ryan Rico, is going to have a 58-plus yard punt. He's just going to bomb one. And this, Whoa. What this means is okay. this will be the rare instance where the offense actually is backed up and doesn't uh, you know, convert on a third down somewhere. And out comes uh, you know, the best player on the team to rip a 58-plus uh, yarder and give BYU that field position back. I, I guarantee that's going to happen, man. Are you guaranteeing that Ryan Rico is the best player on the team, too? Is that a Stone Cold guarantee? He walks into this season <laughs> as the best player on the team. <laughs> Just because he's a punter. Okay. Now I'm getting texts about air frying stuff, which is great. Which is great. I, I love it. I love it. All right. You know what? Let's, we got a little extra time. I want to throw in another guarantee, Jeremy. Is that cool? Can it's I, so can cool. I guarantee? Can I just? Can I make a? Can I make a bold guarantee? Oh, Is that you're fair? combining bold predict bold predictions with guarantees here. Why not? Why not? Why not make a bold guarantee? BYU has typically, and, and I got to go back through like the history of independence in season openers. They haven't been like a high scoring team outside of the Navy game, really. Yeah. Outside of the Navy like onslaught in 2020. BYU has not been the team to like score a ton of points in the season opener because yes. it's typically kind you want, of you want to walk through it? and there are turnovers. Like, yeah, okay, yeah, let, let's go ahead. Outside go. of Navy, has BYU ever scored like 40 or more in a season opener? Ever? No, uh, well, you're talking independence in, in, in only? Independence? No. In independence? No, that's the only one. In, in independence. One time, right? Okay, guarantee, bold right here. BYU scores at least 35 points tomorrow. Guarantee it. Yeah, I, and go. I like that a lot. Listen, Let's get it done. Because 17 plus probably applies there. I, I'm not. I'm not sure South uh, Florida is going to get into the 20s. Perhaps they do, and we're super surprised. But but our confidence is in the experience return for BYU, which South Florida has great experience coming back as well. But the experience coming back for South Florida is from a two-win team. They've added. A, they hope they're improved. They've added a lot of transfers, as I mentioned, 13 Power Five transfers. BYU's offense lost, uh, you know, essentially James Empey, Samson Nakua, and Tyler Algier. Like, everybody's back. We're confident this team's going to come out like gangbusters. You retained the offensive and defensive coordinators. UCF has brand new OC and DC in this case. I just think BYU's ready. Oh, and by the way, they come lost on. the last time they played there. Jaron Hall didn't play against this yes. team last year. It was his first start. He's a very different player. I just think it's a perfect storm of positive reasons why BYU is going to show up in a big way in the opener. And like you said, the rare out of the gates, this offense is ready to rock situation. Why wouldn't they do yes. this with this yes. experience coming back and the quarterback and the coordinator and the whole team minus Christopher Brooks, essentially? Why not? Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. 35 plus points and, and BYU does what they have not done often in independence in the season opener. They look sharp. Probably not to the tune of what we saw against Navy because there were some other mitigating circumstances and apparently Navy forgot how to tackle, according to their head coach, Ken Niamatololo. So I'm going to assume that South Florida has done some tackling drills. <laughs> That's a safe to assumption. Game. But still, still, BYU is going to score 35-plus. Bold, stone-cold guarantee that their offense will put up some points tomorrow. I can't wait. And I'm glad you brought up James Empey because he signed with the Miami Dolphins, man. He's, his NFL career still I didn't know that. Jam. That's great he news. The Cowboys got cut. He's, he's with the Dolphins. That's what's up. Congratulations. Upgrade in location in terms of weather. Although Dallas, great place to be. Great place to be. Okay, let's check with you on uh, yes. our question of the day. What are you willing to guarantee will happen in BYU's opener against South Florida? We're just asking to get cold take, taken here. <laughs> let's go to Voice of the Nation. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. At Angler24 underscore 7. I wonder if this person fishes. That BYU will get out of Florida with their second win in that state. If it's close or a blowout, doesn't matter, just win. Again, the thing with Florida, Spence, and we've talked about is when BYU went to Florida to play a game, it was going to play a really good team. Florida State, Miami, 
Ohio State in the Citrus Bowl in 85. Like, it's different when you play unmotivated UCF in the Boca Raton Bowl and now USF. Like, hey, go and win those games. Like, UCF even in 2014, that's a decent to good UCF team that in three years is going to go undefeated. Yes, BYU should show up and do exactly what we expect them to do against a team that on paper they are supposed to beat. There's a reason that BYU is a 12-point favorite, okay? Like, I, I know I, I've been saying it all week, like, oh, man, I feel a trepidation. I'm a little worried. What if the weather? You know what? I've talked myself out of it because I'm looking at the strength that BYU has man-to-man one-to-one against South Florida tomorrow. I just feel like BYU is a better team. They know each other. They're more experienced. They, they're not going to be relying on 13 transfers to come in and try and figure it out in game one. I'm buying BYU. Let's go, man. It's, it's time. The confidence is really high today. And, yes, to your point, Jerem, can't wait for our guarantees to come back on Monday. And then the voice after this says, it didn't. <laughs> and it didn't happen. <laughs> like, what? We're going to hire Ron Howard to do it. <laughs> yeah, all good. That's why we, No shame. That, that's why we do this all show. Good. All right, Jerem, coming up, 7th rank BYU women's volleyball. Hey, they took care of business against Utah State last night, and it was, fun, it was fun to watch that. Now, they look to remain undefeated as they host Cincinnati tonight, 9 Eastern, live on BYU TV. And coming up, how much better is South Florida than last year? They've got 13 Power 5 chances, as we've mentioned. The voice of the Bulls, Jim Lauk, tells us this is BYU Sports Nation from Provo and Tampa. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation, live from Tampa and Studio C. Much more from Spencer Linton coming up in the program. Great to have you with us on this game day eve. Guys, girls, we made it. We made it. The game's tomorrow, which is very exciting. To preview the matchup with South Florida and BYU, we bring in the radio play-by-play voice of the Bulls, Jim Lau, who joined the program last year ahead of that matchup in Provo. Jim, great to have you back on the program. Thanks. I appreciate it. This is a fun matchup because there's been a couple of games, obviously, uh, here recently. 2019 there, Jaron Hall's first start, first starting black quarterback in BYU history in that storyline. UCF wins that. Uh, BYU and South Florida play last year in Provo, and uh, BYU wins that, but a weird game that's a one score at the end. Baylor Romney's the starter there. What are some of the storylines you're looking at going into this one since we do have some familiarity with the two schools from the past couple of seasons? Well, I think South Florida is a little bit of a hard read going in because there are a lot of new players. There are two new coordinators. The offensive and defensive coordinators will be calling their first games. And the head coach, Jeff Scott's in his third season now, and that's always kind of the magical year where a head coach now has all his players, all his coaches in place. And a lot of times that third year will fall into place for a head coach. And of course, South Florida fans are hoping that's the case. They're going to be a lot better, I think, than they were last year. The question is how much and how soon. Uh, They have a really, really tough schedule, not only tomorrow, but after that, they uh, have an FCS team coming up in week two. But following that, they go to Florida and then they go to Louisville. So they're going to get tested very early, and we'll see uh, how it starts for them tomorrow. For BYU fans, I hope is Florida is at least 1-0 uh, after this week against Utah. Uh, Jim, let's talk about Gary Bohannon. Some familiarity, obviously, with BYU fans having played Baylor last year. Gary had a decent game in that one. They didn't need him to throw the ball a ton because Baylor ran for 309 yards, so now perhaps Gary might be asked to do a little more, although Jaron Mangum is a beast with 15 touchdowns last year. Um, What do you see from Gary that gives you hope that this offense will be different? You know, he's he's an interesting case. He came in 
late and kind of out of the blue a little bit. Uh, USF uh, was not really in the market for another quarterback. They had Timmy McLean, who played uh, in Provo last year and uh, was a true freshman and had some really great moments, and it really looked like he would probably be the guy here for the next couple of years. Uh, but the opportunity to uh, bring Bohannon in for a visit presented itself. One thing led to another, and now a guy who did not play in the spring game, was not here in all of spring, has taken over. His teammates love him. Uh, he's definitely a strong leader, which is a big part of what he brings to the table here. And Bulls fans are really excited about him uh, coming in and taking over this offense, an offense that should be quite a bit different under the new offensive coordinator, Travis Trickett. Let's talk about these 13 Power 5 transfers that I think I've mentioned four times up to this point in the show in 22 minutes. Which of these transfers uh, do you feel like will have uh, the biggest impact? I would probably uh, say to watch the defensive line. Uh, the failure to get pressure on the quarterback last year by South Florida was really the core of most of their difficulties in 2021. They didn't stop the run very well. That put pressure on the linebackers, put pressure on the defensive secondary, put pressure on the offense because a lot of times the defense couldn't get off the field on third down. So they really tried to make a move, bringing in some new faces on the defensive line. Uh, the new defensive coordinator, Bob Shoup, is, is a little bit more inclined to uh, blitz from multiple positions. And I think that will make a big difference. But when you look at the players coming in, there, there's new guys at almost every position that should be helping. But the key position, I think, is going to be the defensive line. Shoup certainly got a tremendous resume. His LinkedIn looks amazing. It'll be interesting to see what kind of impact he has. With a group, Jim, that returns nine starters, you add some of those uh, guys. How do you think they match up against the BYU offense that – uh, comes back as one of the top 15 in the country from last year. I think they've got a chance to match up reasonably well. One of the other characteristics of this team this year is much better depth, and that's going to be really important as well. Last year, the game in Provo was not the normal USF game, getting down big early and then coming back. What was more frequent for USF was being right there at the end of the game, either with a lead or within striking distance and not being able to get over the top at the end of the game. Part of that was guys were playing 70, 75, maybe 80 snaps per game, and they just wore down in the fourth quarter. They've got so much better depth at virtually every position this year. I think they can match up a little bit better. They'll go with two linebackers and five in the defensive secondary most of the game. But the big thing is going to be, again, stopping the run, pressure on the quarterback. They've got a lot of vets in the defensive secondary where I think they can, they can really make some plays. But they've got to have help from the front seven. We're talking to Jim Lauk, the radio play-by-play -play for the USF Bulls here on BYU Sports Nation on a game day eve. For the BYU fans watching on TV and then most certainly the ones that will be at Raymond James Stadium, what do you recommend uh, nearby the stadium, in the stadium, that they need to make sure they check out? Well, it's a great facility, a home of the, the Buccaneers and a home of many Super Bowls. So one of the main roads uh, right next to it is Dale Mabry Highway, and every restaurant you can imagine is uh, up and down the line there. Uh, a lot of tailgating early on. It's going to be warm. Expect uh, not only warm temperatures, but probably. Probably the occasional afternoon rainstorm, too. Hopefully we won't have any thunder and lightning. But there's a lot to do directly around the stadium. It's a great area. Bulls have played at Raymond James and its predecessor, uh, uh, the original Tampa Stadium, since their inception. They're hoping to move to an on-campus facility in the next three or four years. But right now, Raymond James has been a big, uh, big uh, advantage to them in recruiting and playing conditions throughout the years. 
Jim, if BYU fans want a creamsicle Buccaneers jersey of Steve Young, do you think they can find one in Tampa? I think that would be a project. This is uh, <laughs> as great as as great as Steve was here. This is Bradyville. <laughs> yes, you it can't, is. You can't you. You can't walk three steps without finding a Tom Brady jersey for sale. Um, but uh, I remember I was a young reporter when uh, when Steve was here. It was really before his greatest years in in San Francisco. But he was a terrific quarterback. But I'm telling you, Tom Brady rules this town right now. What a boon to get Tom Brady and obviously a <laughs> Super Bowl title, which has been amazing, and to get him back after the retirement. You know, just a brief respite in the offseason there. Uh, what sticks out about well, BYU to you uh, as a team that you saw in person last year, a team that uh, won 10 games and is coming in ranked in the top 25 in the preseason poll in the AP? Well, size, strength, and speed, I think, uh, you know, those are – rare combinations you play some teams that have uh, a couple of those but maybe not all three of them the other thing and both usf coordinators have talked about this in their media avails this week is how unconventional byu is and uh, bob shoop said you know he called some of their the things they do offensively random it's not random in BYU's planning. Obviously, they're doing everything for a reason, and it's well thought out. But when you're trying to defend against them, they'll do something, and you'll look at that and say, well, I didn't think they'd do that out of that formation, or they wouldn't do that now or something. So there are very to prepare for. It helps USF, obviously, that the two teams saw each other last year. Here also, it's week one, so you got a little bit of extra time to get ready. But uh, the word I kept hearing from a lot of the coaches this year at USF in describing BYU is unconventional, hard to plan for. We're talking to Jim Lauk, the radio voice of the USF Bulls on BYU Sports Nation. Certainly, BYU is on this end of the spectrum in 2011 when Utah went to the Pac-12 hoping that it had its own P5 invite. That did not come until last year and applies next year. Now USF's in a similar situation with rival UCF, who will join the Big 12 with BYU. What's the hope for USF football uh, in the future, and what's that landscape look like? I think there's always hope in the college football landscape because uh, anybody that says the realignment is over forever uh, it's probably wrong. Who knows when, who knows where, but it's going to change again. And I think USF is doing a good job trying to get ready for that. They are working hard on facilities. They have a brand new multi-million dollar indoor practice facility that will be opening in a couple of weeks. Uh, over the years, there's been lots of stops and starts about a possible on-campus stadium. This push feels a little different. They've got a lot of the right things in place. I think it's going to happen this time. So facilities are, are uh, definitely a big part of it. Uh, fan base, trying to grow that is important. And then the biggest thing, perhaps out of all of them, starts tomorrow, got to win some football games. You know, USF has a great history for such a young program being nationally ranked multiple times and some of the great uh, victories in their past beating Notre Dame and Auburn and Clemson but not much of that has happened in the last couple of years so in order to position themselves they've got to get back to where they want to be on the playing field as well and I think the mindset here in Tampa and around USF is Let's not worry about other people. Let's get our house in order. Let's get ready because there's going to be another round of this sometime, and we better make sure we present the best available package at that time. Well, Jim, we appreciate the time. Best of luck on the call tomorrow on the radio, and uh, we look forward to the season opener with BYU in South Florida. Thanks. I appreciate it. Jim Lauk, radio voice of the South Florida Bulls, giving some insight into USF. They, listen, they are going through what BYU went through uh, with Utah. And remember, there was a year there where USF was top five in the country. I mean, I think it was 2016. They were tremendous. So BYU lost this last game in 2019 in Raymond James Stadium. You know, who, you know who's licking their chops to get back there and try and win this game? Jaron Hall. Jaron Hall is. BYU Sports Nation Game Day is the new name of Countdown to Kickoff. Check it out tomorrow at 2 Eastern time. I can't believe we're saying tomorrow. Tomorrow is the game. This is great. The season premiere, baby. 2 Eastern time. Two hours every pregame show with Dave, Blaine, David, Brian. 
here in Provo. Spencer from Tampa. Check it out tomorrow, 2 Eastern time on BYU TV and the app. Coming up, which football opponent is the best watch this weekend? Not named South Florida. There's some good ones. This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by BYU Food to Go, the MVP of your next event. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. You're not here, Bill. I don't hear anything. This is BYU Sports Nation to interact with the show and get content throughout the day. You can check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. He is Spencer in Tampa. I am Jeremy Provo. Let's whip it. Good whip round is presented by Maris, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. All right, Jerem. Which upcoming BYU opponent are you most interested in watching this weekend? And there are a bunch, okay? Baylor against Albany, Oregon and Georgia. That's a top 15 matchup. Wyoming, Tulsa, Utah State at Bama. Notre Dame at Ohio State. I'm guessing you'll like that one. Arkansas and Cincinnati is an interesting matchup. Yes, Liberty Southern Miss, East Carolina, NC State. Boise State at Oregon State is a sneaky game. Utah Tech at Sacramento State. You can find it somewhere. Trust me, it's going to be on TV somewhere. And Stanford you mean the internet? and Colgate. <laughs> um, it's Stanford and Colgate, said no one. Uh, it's Notre Dame at Ohio State. That's just a massive, awesome college football game. And Ohio State's a double-digit fave, if I recall, in that one. It's definitely Notre Dame. For sure. Uh, I like Oregon, Georgia, just because BYU plays Oregon two weeks from tomorrow. That game's coming up real quick. We're going to find out if Oregon deserves that number 11 ranking in a real big hurry tomorrow when they take on Georgia. They do not, is the uh, answer. What's the chance women's volleyball remains undefeated after this weekend? Well, we were making guarantees earlier in the show. Uh, 100%, I guarantee it, oh. BYU women's volleyball will be undefeated oh. after the weekend. They've got something to prove against Pitt. They've got Cincinnati. They're together. They have rallied around Heather Olmstead, Jerem. I, I, this team is so close. And they have battled through adversity this week. They are ready to play. 100% guarantee they'll be undefeated after the weekend. I'm calling the match, so I won't go so far to predict said match. But uh, let's just say that BYU is 105 and 5 at home under Heather Olmstead. 29 match win streak right now. Ties the program record. It's also number one in the country. BYU is hard to beat at home. I think uh, I think it's there's a good chance BYU remains undefeated. But Pitt is it, Pitt is really good. Pitt is really good. This is going to be a Sweet 16, Elite Eight kind of matchup that uh, BYU yeah, was hoping yeah, they were yeah, going to get yeah. at Pitt last year. So it's going to be a great match tomorrow night. Hey, speaking of NCAA tournament feel and matches, BYU women's soccer has played like three of those in a row. At Ohio State, they hosted Colorado, top 20 team. Then they hosted Alabama last night, which is a team that's just outside the top 25. They'll be in These now. These all types of matches BYU can see in the tournament. Yeah, right? So here's the thing. After the two wins, one loss, one tie start for BYU women's soccer, including a tie and a loss at home in back-to-back -back matches, is it time to adjust expectations? No, I had adjusted these a couple weeks ago when BYU is number three. I said I felt like they're rated too high for me. I felt like BYU probably in the 12 to 18 range would be more of uh, that spot. Although, it's the anti-AP poll thing with BYU soccer. They're like, no, you're number three. So pick your, pick your poison. You're either underrated or overrated. You're rarely properly rated. Uh, but BYU women's soccer still has the same expectations, Spence, which is win the WCC and win multiple games in the tourney, see if you can't make a run. Yeah, in terms of, of the conference and being there to win another WCC crown, absolutely no expectations are changing there. It's strictly just like the national ranking, in my opinion, that yep. we are adjusting, right? Yep. They started at number three, they dropped to number nine, they popped back up to number six. They're probably going to fall down around like 11 or 12. Uh, in next week's coaches poll, which I think is fair. Like, yeah, no, I, I feel like BYU is worthy of a spot just outside the top 10, you know, like you like 12. Hey, if they drop to 15, fine. Just, just, they'll be ranked, they'll be good. They'll figure out how to get some more of those shots to go in the back of the net, and then they can slowly climb back up the rankings. It'll take a few games for BYU to stick out its hand and see if Mjolnir will come to it. You know what I'm saying? They, they have some games to prove themselves. After reports that Washington has talked to the Big 10, could we start a weekly Pac-12 segment uh, sponsored by Crumble? What are your thoughts? Oh. 
<laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. My reaction says yes, Jerem. We should start that segment and execute it as much as we possibly can. For the Big 12's <laughs> sake, I think we want Oregon and Washington to bounce, right? Because then if you're in the, we want the four corners camp for the Big 12 plus more. Hey, now the Big 12 is secured as the, uh, in my opinion at least, the number three league in America, which we're all playing for third here. We being the other leagues, the other three uh, power fives, we're playing for third. Shout out to the AAC, that P6 stuff, that's probably gone away now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Who doesn't want some more crumble too? Come on, man. Let's make it happen. That's a controversial take these days in Utah County. My sister works for HQ. I have a conflict of interest here. Free crumble for Jerem through familial I'm, ties. I'm still and waiting for it. Whatever. No, I had hey, it one time. You're right. Yeah, tomorrow at 10 Eastern, Jerem. Tomorrow night, 10 Eastern, 8 p.m. Mountain. After you watch BYU football beat South Florida. Yep, calling it. Sixth Rank Soccer will host Cal State Northridge, an opportunity to bounce back. Watch the game live on the BYU TV app or listen live on BYU Radio. Killers were in town Tuesday night. The Killers are back in the form of the Matadors on Saturday. Our new prediction segment is coming up for games this week. BYU has had fantasy football style game. Let the draft begin. This is BYU Sports Nation from Provo and Tampa. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation from Provo and Tampa. Hey, got to bounce around, bounce around. Uh, the bounce gotta house dance, is UCF, not dance, US man. South, but uh, have you figured out, by the way, how you're going to be able to fire the cannon on that pirate ship yet? Still working on that. Still working on that one. Uh, we reached out to Tom Brady. He hasn't responded to our commentary. <laughs> how exactly um, did you reach out to him? I, 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 don't, I don't know. Well, uh, we, we slid into his DMs. Um, he he hasn't responded to that yet. So yeah. <laughs> please, please, don't we'll ever do or, please don't ever do or say that again in this program, okay? All right, it's time for a brand new segment on the show. <laughs> BYU Sports Nation Fantasy Friday, except when it's the Utah State week and then it'll be Thursday. We are doing a, a fantasy draft, and we will play lineups each week. Here's how it works. We're going to draft seven current or former players. Each week we'll pick three players from our roster who will start, and then uh, we're going to play an offensive and defensive player and then a flex player, either side. And then each week we can, if we want, replace one player via the waiver wire. Whoever lost the previous week gets the first choice. Okay. I love this so much. I'm so excited that we are doing this. I need more fantasy football, and this is a way to do it and be held accountable on BYU Sports Nation. The scoring will work this way, Jerem. On offense, you get one point per 10 rush or receiving yards, four points if you have a pass touchdown, six points per rush or receiving touchdown. On defense, and we've really given strength to the defenders here, one point per tackle, Two points for a tackle for loss, three points for a sack, four points for an interception, fumble recovery, or forced fumble, and six points for a defensive touchdown. Then the special team scoring, one point for extra points, three points per field goal. If it's a 50-plus field goal, Jerem, two bonus points for a total of five points on that specific field goal. We've simplified it. We're ready to roll. Have now we? for the draft. <laughs> let's go. All right, let's play. Okay, now to the draft. Before the show, a private security firm, we're told, oversaw the coin flip, and you won, <laughs> so you get the first pick. We have no idea who the other's picking, and then we'll, then we'll list our uh, lineup in the next segment. I will take that good fortune with the first pick from the private security firm, Jerem, and with the first pick in the 2022 BYU Sports Nation Fantasy Football Draft, I select... BYU junior quarterback, Jaron Hall. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the first pick goes to Jaron Hall. Okay. With, the, with uh, yeah, hey, obvious pick here, man. The, the, you got to do it. That's the number one choice. He was number one on my big board as well. He was on mm -hmm. Kuiper and McShay's mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. My first pick <laughs> goes to Chris Brooks. I got I, running back. He's going to pile Ooh, up this stats. Chris Brooks, my first pick. All right. So we've got the quarterback and the running back off the board for BYU. My second pick 
And I'm going to go to the NFL here for this Fantasy Football Friday fun jam. Fred Warner is my second pick in the BYU Sports Station Fantasy Football Draft. I'll be honest, I'm feeling behind the eight ball here. Okay, my pick to counter that, because you got to get some defense, is Keenan Peely. Keenan Peely will be my guy in the middle, Ooh. racking up tackles. He's going to have at least 12 in this game, plus maybe a forced fumble. Let's go. Keenan Peely. Now, what's interesting, Jeremy, is you pick Keenan Peely. I can't play Fred Warner until next week because the NFL doesn't have any games. So yep. just maybe you have an advantage there Only for one week, though. in week number one. All Only right. one week. The number three pick, number three pick in this year's fantasy football draft, I'm staying in the NFL. And this is a wild card. This is probably a reach a little bit. I'm going to go with Taysom Hill. Ooh. I'm, yeah. I'm a little surprised. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a little surprised. Taysom's obviously okay. on the big board here. All right. All right. But I have him a little further down here. We don't know what he's going to be like as a okay. tight end. We know he's a baller. Are they going to throw him? Uh, are they going to throw him? I know. I know. It's a risk. It's a risk. Wow. I know. Okay. But I'm going. Okay. Taysom Hill, my third pick. Okay. That's, this changes things. This changes things. Okay. My, mm-hmm. uh, my third. <laughs> Jerem, Jerem's adjusting. My third pick is going to be Zach Wilson. Uh, because I could play him as the Ooh, flex okay. or the offensive player. I go with Zach Wilson. We expect a bigger year. And we don't have negative stats here. Like if he throws picks or whatever, no nope. problem, dog. Doesn't matter. He's going to throw Doesn't fewer matter. this year, we think. But Let's that's go. How we've, right. That's how we've simplified things. We've taken negative points off the board for quarterbacks. Okay. Uh, with the fourth pick on Team Spencer, I am drafting star wide receiver Puka Nakua for BYU. Puka nice. Nakua is my fourth pick. Nice. Okay, uh, let's see here. Let's see here. Hmm, so many options. I've got two. This, this, your reach for Taysom is throwing me off just a little bit here. Okay, uh, okay, I'm going off the board. Well, okay, I, I'm going. My, my, uh, my fourth pick here will be um, oh, Tyler Algier. <laughs> it's tough. It's so tough. It's so Ty- tough. Tyler, wow, Tyler Algier. Algier. You like Tyler Algier. I love Tyler okay. Algier. Okay, you think yep. he's going to play a big role for the Atlanta Falcons. I do. All I right. Do. Uh, okay. I need another tackle machine, Jerem, um, and I think the BYU linebackers are going to produce a few of those. So with my fifth pick, and here's a guy that can produce some turnovers too. He's Wiley. He's back there. He's had interceptions in the past, not to mention tackles, tackles for lost sacks. Peyton Wilgar is That's my great fifth one. pick That's a great for one. Team that, Spencer. That would yeah. have been my next one. So with that in mind, I go Ben Bywater. I, I need to uh, load up the defense here. Ooh. Ben okay. Bywater. Yeah. Okay. Uh, man, I, I think I want to move back to offense here. Ugh. This is getting tougher by the pick as the later rounds go on. <laughs> yes, know, you have to dude. adjust in the moment. I, I am going to select the other high-level wide receiver for BYU. It's ah, maybe not. Ah! Yes. Yes, I'm taking him. I'm taking him. I'm taking Gunnar Romney. I, at some point, he's going to pay off in a big way for me, Jerem. I'm taking Gunnar Romney. I'm going to hear from the Mormon colonies about how I didn't pick Gunnar. Uh, you know, this, this is, that's my bad. Okay, my next pick is a little off the board, but I like points. That's the point of the game. I'm taking okay. Jake Oldroyd. Jake Oldroyd is my next pick. Okay, kicker. Kicker. All right. Uh, I'm going to go to counter that with my final pick. Oh, and, I, and I'm tempted to go back to the NFL with some defense, but I, I just uh, – I feel like this guy, he's fallen in the draft, and I don't know why he's fallen in the draft. I think he's going to come back for a major year. This is based on Aaron Rodgers' commentary that he's back, he's healthy, he's going to play a huge role in the offense this year. Jaron Hall's more comfortable finding him and throwing to him. It's Isaac Rex, my friend. Mm. Isaac Rex is my next pick. Nice. Okay. And was that the seventh one, I, mean, I think? Was that the last pick? That was my seventh pick. Yeah, okay. That was my seventh pick, I yes. need a third defender just in case. Okay, and, and this guy is okay. a guy that I could be my starter pretty regularly. He's on a new NFL team now. He's got a single-digit number. KVN does it again, Kyle Van Noy. Okay, you so re- Kyle Van Noy. recap okay. your picks. You remember him? Okay, yes. Yeah, so uh, on my team with the first pick, I took Jaron Hall, then went with Fred Warner, surprised you by taking Taysom Hill. Yep. Then I went with the linebacker. Uh, or maybe not. Oh, no, Puka Nakua with the wide receiver, then linebacker uh, Peyton Wilgar, uh, and that was followed by Gunnar Romney and Isaac Rex. 
Okay, here we go. I got Chris Brooks, Keenan Peely, Zach Wilson, uh, Tyler Algier, Ben Bywater, Jake Oldroyd, Kyle Van Noy. So here's how it's going to work. We're going to go to break in a sec. We have to decide what three mm -hmm. players we're playing. You can play an offensive player, a defensive <laughs> player, and a flex. Obviously, the NFL guys are out. They're not playing this week. But you could play all right, NFL right. guys, all BYU Cougars. It just depends in the upcoming weeks. Obviously, this first week, it's all BYU guys. We, we will uh, go to break here in a segment, and we will figure out what our three are, and we will tell you coming up. Hey, we left some big names on the board, Jerem. No Keanu Hill, no Jamal Williams drafted, no Michael Davis. Hey, the waiver no wire is going to be just, like, just thick. It's going to be juicy. <laughs> it's going to be juicy for sure. All right, let's keep this thing rolling. I'm all out of sorts. The fantasy, I'm sweated. I'm sweating harder now than I have the entire show based on what we just did. If you want to get ready for game day, get episodes of Coordinator's Corner after further review and BYU Football with Kalani Satake. They're always available on demand on the BYU TV app. And we'll set our lineups coming up. we got to figure it out after the break. This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America the official credit union of BYU Athletics. BYU Sports Nation is on demand. Download the BYU TV and BYU Radio apps today or just download the podcast on your favorite podcast platform. As always, please subscribe, rate, and review. I'm Jerem Jordan. He is Spencer Linton, Provo in Tampa, repping today on a game day eve and a fantasy Friday as well. Okay, here is my starting lineup for tomorrow's <laughs> first edition of this. I go with Chris Brooks, Keenan Peely, and Ben Bywater is my three starters. Woo, the two linebacker approach for you with that flex pick. Okay, I, I like that. And I think you have an advantage tomorrow because First I kind of went heavy on, my on the NFL picks, Jerem. Okay, there you go. There you go. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that is fantastic. Okay, my starters for week number one. Not surprisingly, yeah, I'm going to go with the quarterback, Jaron Hall. I am joining you in the linebacker uh, approach with Peyton Wilgar. And then I think Isaac Rex may just be the fantasy sleeper tomorrow, Jerem. Isaac Rex is my third starter uh, for week number one. Let's get it going, man. Touchdown, fantasy football. Touchdowns score really big. But if a touchdown isn't scored, I'm banking on a lot of tackles and perhaps a turnover, right, sure, that gets yeah. you four points, uh, you know, and sacks and TFLs and that kind of thing. Okay, our question of the day. What are you willing to guarantee will happen in BYU season opener against South Florida? Uh, at Young Tim 32 on Twitter. I guarantee that Kalani will dance on the sideline at least three times. Do you feel like the over-under <laughs> is one and a half or two here? Yeah, I'd probably say, like, he'll probably dance, like, twice. And what counts during the game? Like, the actual game time or do pregame and postgame count in that scenario, too? Because Good if we're question. playing in pre and postgame, then Kalani's got more opportunities to dance, right? Maybe that, that over-under gets pushed up to, like, two and a half or three. That's true. That's true. Okay, our Elite Voice of the Day is presented by Sundance Mountain Resort at kevin.i.217 on Instagram. I can guarantee a Cougar victory, but hopefully that's not a Charles Barkley kind of guarantee. I guarantee yeah, we, we think, obviously, we think BYU is going to win. I said 17 plus. Don't at me. Unless it doesn't happen, then you're more than welcome to at me. <laughs> listen, wait, listen, if heaven forbid something goes terribly wrong tomorrow and BYU does not win the game after you claim 17 plus, does will not you win at that the game? Point admit that there, is, that, there, that there is a curse. There we could also curse. admit that BYU stunk. <laughs> Like, it's not all on me if BYU loses. Like, if, like if something bad happens, uh, it's my fault? Come on, man. Today's Rise and Shoutouts presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. To all BYU fans out there who have made it through another offseason, this one was, it's you always did long. It. You did it. Here we are, Spence. We made it through this, and now we've got BYU football tomorrow, baby. Yes, and, I, I mean, undoubtedly, we – we're looking forward to this season, I mean, more so than any memory I can, I can or, or season I can remember in the recent past. Like, there's so much excitement about this season because we feel like they're on the verge of doing something special, and that starts tomorrow. Got to come out firing in week one. We'll see if they can get on their way to that special season. Otherwise, it's my fault. Okay, uh, and go Gators, by the way. <laughs> Our thanks to today's guest, Jim Lauk. Yes.
<laughs> oh my goodness. Do I do the gator chomp now? Can I? Yeah, can we I can do, do the gator chomp. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, okay. <laughs> Apologies to Dennis Pitta for not drafting you in our fantasy football draft, my friend. Maybe next year. Conversation continues 24-7 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hashtag BYUSN. For Spencer, I'm Jerem. Shout out to Corby Easton. See you tonight for women's volleyball against Cincinnati 9 Eastern. And tomorrow's game day coverage at 2 Eastern. Go Cougs. Let me tell the world the truth. Let me tell the world the truth. I know we on the way. Gotta know we on the way.